Let's talk about legacy inter-VLAN routing. This can only be done with a router with as many physical interfaces as it supports. So we have this network and we have this router. This router only has two physical interfaces on it, meaning we can only allow two VLANs to communicate. Here's an example on how to set up legacy inter-VLAN routing. Let's start by talking about files. Almost everything is a file, making it very important to maintain. Enforcing file security can be difficult if you don't know a single thing about how they work. The ground rules here are pretty simple. Most files can be read, written to, or executed. Permissions can be set two ways, either explicit, where the file or folder exclusively has permissions set for it, or if the folder itself sets permissions for the contents that is called inherited permissions. In a Windows operating system, files can be a mess. You'll want to make sure the original creator is the only person who has full ownership of their files. Another important thing to look out for is that nobody has the right to modify files within the Windows folder, specifically System32. You can check out an item's properties by right-clicking it, whether it be the item or folder, going to Properties, and then looking in the Security tab. When it comes to files or folders, you may have hidden folders, which can be a problem for us if we can't see those certain files. To fix this, you'll want to open up Folder Options. Go to View, and then do two things. Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives, and then uncheck Hide Extensions for Known File Types. The reason you want to uncheck the second thing is because I said you'll want to know what you're clicking, and by default, Windows will hide well-known file extensions. You'll want to avoid that because you might click on a file that isn't actually a picture or a document, but an executable. As I said previously in the other episode, extension mismatches can cause problems. When looking for files, you can use Windows Explorer via the search bar. For example, if we're looking for a media file, go to the directory of your choice. Keep in mind, if there are subdirectories in the main directory you're looking for, say uh, C user, and you were to search for MP3s, you'd search every directory within C user. How would you search? Well, MP3s have their own extension, .mp3. Within the search bar, you would type asterisk .mp3 into the search bar, and it would search exclusively for files ending with .mp3. Simply searching in that format is the use of a wildcard, where you add something at the end and something has to match. If you wanted to find PDFs, you'd use asterisk .pdf in the search bar. This example goes based on extension. Before we move away from files, the last thing we need to cover is Data Execution Prevention, or DEP. DEP is important as it's a way to prevent malicious code from running on your computer's memory. To access it, you'll go to your Advanced System Settings located in the Control Panel, look at Settings and Performance, and then click Data Execution Prevention. You should have DEP on for essential Windows programs and services only. There should be no exceptions. Let's go ahead and start talking about Windows Server. Windows Server runs differently compared to a standard workstation. First of all, it's a server. It's going to serve things to users. You'll have to carefully reference your documentation when handling a server. Now, a server will have a server manager. This can be opened using the start menu. This will be your dashboard. You'll have certain pieces of information here that might be helpful. The area you'll want to start with is the local servers tab. Here, you'll have access to the server's current properties. Now, some of these items will be configured a specific way. Some stuff to note includes the Windows Defender Protection, which is installed by default. Another thing is Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration, or IE ESC. You'll want to have this on. However, I must warn you, you should have a third-party browser installed, because the feature itself is kind of annoying. Windows Server will allow you to add and remove special features exclusive to itself. One of the most important ones I like to talk about is Active Directory. When you sign into a profile anywhere on a campus or office, you're given a set of credentials. This set of credentials works on any computer that is a part of the domain. A domain is a group of computers that are being controlled by one computer called a domain controller. The domain controller runs a server role called Active Directory. Active Directory authenticates the user and allows them to use a computer. This is important to note because it's one of the most common services in any form of environment. 
There are other common server services out there, like Internet Information Services, or IIS. It's a web server, meaning you're serving content or services to users. Windows Deployment Service deploys versions of Windows over the network. Hyper-V is a hypervisor that manages and creates virtual machines. I recommend checking out and researching all the kinds of services that exist on Windows Server. Windows Server also has the ability to deploy DHCP and DNS. Ultimately, you need to keep in mind that servers will be serving users, meaning there needs to be more availability to them. This makes them a bigger target compared to a standalone desktop. Shared folders are exactly what they are. They are shared drives or folders that are accessible through commands or the file explorer. Shared folders will be located in the computer management snap-in. Here, you can add, delete, and modify shares. Keep this in mind when you're looking for entry points on a system. Some applications I could suggest include FileZilla for FTP and Bitfies for SSH. The final topic we're going to be talking about is the concept of securing an application in the first place. It's important to keep in mind that hardening an application or host is difficult and that nothing is truly 100% secure. There is no such thing as unbreakable security. The only thing you can do is make it extremely difficult or tedious. Every application, whether server or desktop, will have some kind of setting to configure. For example, FileZilla, an FTP server, has configurable settings like auto-banning connections or using SSL with FTP. Without exploring or reading about it, you wouldn't have known these things. It's imperative to research and experiment. When attempting to learn how to secure an application, these are some questions you can ask yourself. What is being accessed? Since this is an FTP server, files are being accessed. Who is accessing what? It is important to set a form of accounting, whether that means recording IPs, recording user info, or recording nothing. It is important to be able to identify legitimate users or people with malicious intent. How are they accessing it? You can see how it's being accessed. Is it supposed to be visible to the world? Is it supposed to be internal? You need to keep these things in mind and ensure that only people who should be getting access to it are accessing it. If you need to go through your group policy, the same suggestion for sorting services works here. You can sort it based on what is configured, and you might find that the settings that are actually configured will be the most influ- And finally, what can I do to stop them? Check what settings and options you have to prevent malicious intent. Do your research and explore the programs. Experience is relevant because it transfers to other technologies. One FTP server program might be completely different from the other, but ultimately, they both accomplish the same objective and likely use the same features to protect the information. That's it. We've covered everything. I've told you everything you need to build a foundation on locking down a Windows system and working in its environment. This pretty much wraps up everything. With the skills you've learned in the series, hopefully you'll be able to develop a stronger skill set on your own. Thank you for watching the series. If you enjoyed the entirety of the series, consider checking out the links in the description. Until next time.